You're listening to To Hatchapod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. To Hatchapod time again, Key Budge, Greg Garrett, Corey Costello. Guys, how are you? Doing good, Key. Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm excited to uh, discover To Hatchapy today. We are going to discover <laughs> To Hatchapy. Nice little lead into that. Discover more of To Hatchapy. That's right. That's right. Because today we have a special guest. We've got a new business that is a part of our community, and this is highlighting other businesses within our community. And we have Chris Scotty from Discover To Hatchapy. Chris, welcome to To Hatchapod. Hi, guys. How y'all doing today? Doing really good. It's, it's nice to have you in. And before we started talking here and recording, Chris actually brought his Discover to Hatchapi bus in so we could actually go physically stand on it, mm-hmm. walk in, and take a look at it. So when we talk about it, we're gonna we're gonna give you a little firsthand knowledge of how clean and nice this machine and is. And you've been on it too. You've taken the tour. No, oh, no, you, I wasn't you, able to. You, you met them there the day. I wasn't able we to. Had a, a scheduling oh, conflict. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, but that was the the special media day. But Chris, let's talk about the business. You've you and your wife Claire have created Discover to Hatchapi and tell us a little bit about it because people are going okay I think I've heard of it but I'm not sure this is new you guys are just getting started uh, so let's let's talk about the business yeah so we're on in our fourth weekend rounding out a month here of operations it took about six seven months to get through all the permitting and all that good stuff and uh, we're finally ready to take people on tours right now we have our signature wine tour which is uh, three stops at four of our wineries here. We work with Dorner Family Vineyard, Tehachapi Wine and Cattle Company, Tehachapi Winery, and Triassic Vineyards. And so when you go with us, you get to pick from, well, you don't pick, it's on a schedule. But we go to three of those wineries, lunch is included. That's from a local business as well, Small Town Girl Charcuterie. And we also have snacks, water, transportation, of course. Pretty much everything is covered in that price. And this is something that really highlights, you know, this we we have an AVA. We yeah. have a designation for our, our wine. Yeah, this what was is an business. AVA key. That Why is the what American is. Viticulture. Area. It's not association. It's area. area. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, area. AVA. Nailed it. <laughs> and then thanks to Congressman uh, McCarthy for helping get that through the ATF. Who that was were, big. Yeah, that we were able to get that designation over here during the... the the COVID times through the department of treasury. That was, that was at light speed. I might mention, you said six to month, six to seven months for permitting. That yes. was with the County of Kern, not with the city. The city would have gone. <laughs> that's actually that with would the have state. Been, okay. The, the state. state. Okay. Well, even that's more. Even more. <laughs> right. If it would have been the city, we probably would have hand carried it through the system. Yeah. Just so you know, yeah. levels of bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we got the ABA too, though, this was the next, I mean, not even with the ABA certainly helped, but as more wineries, you know, were opening up, uh, Dorner opened their tasting room and Tatchby Winery opened up and, and uh, you know, Tatchby Wine and Cattle had a change in, in ownership. But as, as those opened up, I was telling people like, the next step is a wine tour. Like someone's going to come up with this wine tour idea mm-hmm. uh, because people like to, especially where our wineries are located way out in Cummings Valley. You know, a lot of folks, if, if you're from Bakersfield or somewhere else and you come to drive, you're probably thinking, am I going the right way? Like, I got to go where? I got to do what? And so they feel, I think, much safer and probably even just more comfortable being on a bus and, and enjoying it that yeah, way. Yeah, we, we like to call Tatchby California's best kept secret because you do tend to drive right, right by on the, the highway there. Mm-hmm. And a lot of what makes this an interesting destination is kind of tucked away off the, the main corridor. And so we're trying to make it easy for people to discover what we have to offer here. And a lot of that is the wineries, but we also have future plans for things in town and um, other attractions we like to work with and events we like to put on in the future. But right now we, we really are focusing in on the, the wineries and making sure that we can highlight what is probably one of our main attractions that's growing very quickly. The wines are really getting good. It's superb, good. aren't they? Yeah. They're superb. They really are. Yeah. We have the talent for good wine, and I think in, in a weird way, you know, COVID-19, I think, benefited that industry a little bit because just because being in Kern County, uh, the weather we have in Tehachapi, so in the summer when the wineries, the tastings were outside in places like Paso Robles, where a lot of the folks from the San Joaquin Valley would go, they don't want to go out when it's 100 plus degrees and pass Robles and, and, and sip wine. They can come to Tatchby and sit under oak trees or sit outside on a patio. Yeah. And, and so that really bolstered, I think, the attention of the Tatchby wineries. And then when you guys come along to sort of package it all in one spot, it makes it even easier for people to enjoy it. Right. I mean, it's, it's such a beautiful area. We have those oak woodlands. Uh, all of the wineries have done something unique and special with their tasting rooms and 
have amazing outdoor spaces. And yeah, when you're you're 10 or 20 degrees cooler sometimes than the valley floor, that's hard to beat in the summer. The views are outstanding. You know, in addition to the wine, the the talent. We talked about this, Key and Corey, before. You know, the, the musicians and the singers that come out, they're crazy talent. Yeah, it's it's not something we advertise because we can't guarantee yeah. that there'll be entertainment mm-hmm. on a tour. But to be honest, we haven't had one where there wasn't at least one artist, if not two, um, at multiple stops. Yeah. So like the second and third stop, typically, there will be someone playing music. And they're really good. Yeah. I'm curious <laughs> about the response to people that, because I mean, I get it a little bit when people that visit Tatchby, but how many people that have visited from outside the area do you hear say, I didn't realize to had to be had all this. Like, you do you get that a lot? How many people I hear that time. from who live in town. Hmm. So, well, <laughs> I mean, yes, we, we, we've had folks from out of town come up and they say the same thing. I didn't know that all this was here. We didn't know you had, you know, five wineries up and operating. We didn't know that, you know, Cummins Valley was as beautiful as it is, or the area is as pretty as it is. And the weather's yeah. as nice as it is. But also we have had folks who live in the area who, well, because we'll recommend things to folks as we do the tours, right? Yeah. People, we encourage people to ask, hey, you know, what would you like to do for dinner after your tour? Are you up here for the weekend? Or are you up here regularly and you're just looking for something to do with your family or friends coming up to visit you? And a lot of folks will be like, I didn't know we had all this to mm-hmm. do up here. Oh, a beautiful downtown, great restaurants. Yeah. I mean, yeah. things like the glider port, port mm-hmm. as well. And mm-hmm. um, we have we were just talking about the breweries. Yeah, our third microbrewery third. opened up in the city. So, so we have five wineries in the county of Tehachapi and, and three microbreweries in the city. I think that's a good split. There's like a little the competition going on here. Wineries in the county, cool, yeah. city has the beer. I like, know it, right? Everybody wins in that and that. So arrangement. are we the redneck and the county is sophistication? No, no, microbrews are it... no, no, microbrews are sophisticated. Are they? Yes, that's okay. why they're microbrews. I, I think they are, quite frankly. Yes, I know uh, Westlane. They they brewed some beer in a a uh, cab. Barrel, barrel. Mm-hmm. and he's tapping it this weekend. So I'm looking forward to. There's nothing that. better than barrel beer, like wood barrel beer. Oh. It's very hard to do, and it's it's very limited uh, because you can you you can get steel barrels every day, but getting the wood ones are tough. And so yeah. it's it's going to be awesome. Very cool. Do you yeah. do you plan on expanding your operations into the microbreweries potentially we someday? Absolutely do. Yeah, we we um, are looking at something called the brew bus. Uh, I don't have timing on it yet. We only have the one vehicle. So <laughs> we have to kind of arrange things and work out how that scheduling will work. But uh, it is one of our expansion plans right I now. I remember the day I met Chris and, and Claire Scotty at the Visitor Center. Yes. I was volunteering at the Visitor Center, and they came in, and Cheryl Graham Wilson introduced us, and this and that, and Chris and, and Claire, they've got big plans. They're happy to be here. And now we're here today recording a mm-hmm. podcast about Discover to Hatchaby and a wine tour business. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And I, I do have to give out a little shout out to Cheryl because she has been one of our biggest supporters. Oh, yeah. There's been so much help in contacting the right people mm-hmm. and finding uh, even just facts we need for the little spiels we give during the tour and making sure that we're accurate about the you history. You got hooked up about. with the right person, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's been a huge help. So where did this all come from? Where what was, you know, from the the idea where you guys drinking a glass of wine or and decided, hey, this is something that there's a business here. So we moved up here four years ago, but we've been coming up here for about fifteen years. I have family in the area. And one of the very first things we did was try tasting at at the time it was Sousa and Triassic, and we, were set, and we thought to ourselves, oh, this is interesting. We didn't think there'd be vines up here, for starters. It's a hard area to grow sometimes, depending on the variety of grape, right? And we've always been kind of, um, trying to think of the white, right way to phrase this, wine fans, I'll say. Mm-hmm. We both, or actually our first date was wine tasting up in the Willamette Valley and Kings Valley area in, or in Oregon. And we were really interested in what was going on up here. And eventually we just... As coming up here more and more, we fell in love with the area. And at the same time, we noticed the growth of the wine industry here. And this was actually just before COVID hit. We were looking at the trajectory of our wine industry. And we said, you know, they really need wine tours up here. And Claire and I have a background in travel journalism. I used to work as a photographer. She used to be the writer and editor. And we kind of partner up on doing pieces and reviews and things. 
And so we had seen one side of the industry and we thought, hey, you know what? I think we could do this. And I think there's no better place to do it than here. I mean, it was partially getting in on the ground floor, partially because we're just in love with Tehachapi. This is such a fantastic place. And people often hear me maybe even rattle on about that on the tours. <laughs> but um, but if you love something, you're going to brag on it. Right, exactly. You know? And that exactly. comes across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and so it was just kind of a natural progression. Um, of course, with the pandemic, we hit the brakes a little bit and we waited. And then it kind of felt about the right time to start working on all the paperwork. We knew it would take a long time to open. And so we'd hoped to time it right that we'd start operating just as things were calming down. And it seems to have worked out, fingers crossed. I know folks can't actually see me, but um, it seems to have worked out pretty well. And we're really excited to, to keep it going and, and show people this wonderful place. Hmm. Well, Chris, what, when you, you, you and Claire, you, you think about this, you've got the idea. At some point, you've got to go talk to the wineries. And to see what their response is like. I'm sure they were kind of giddy about someone wanting to do this. But what, what, what was the response like? Uh, <laughs> they were excited about somebody doing it. But I will admit they were skeptical at first. Cautious, let's say. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have a really great working relationship with all of them now. Um, and I cannot ask for better partners in this industry. But it did take a little while to kind of convince folks that we were the right ones to do this. And that they could could trust us we could work out deals and that you know we were this was in the interest of everyone in the area and that we are committed as a company not just for our own business and and running our tours and being successful there but we have a very vested interest in the success of Tehachapi as a destination Mm -hmm. and we've been working with the tourism commission we've been working with Um, the Wine Growers Commission, and some of these other folks who are trying to promote Tehachapi as a destination, donating time, donating, you know, energy, whatever it takes to try to show, you know, Southern California and California as a whole, like, hey, this is a great weekend destination. Mm -hmm. And then just reaching outside even that range and saying, come on out. I mean, this is such a nice place to stay, and you could really fill out a good three-day weekend. So no Chris problem. is saying what I've been saying, what we've been saying for years. So it's, it's great that, yeah. uh, yeah, and it's true. Everything you said is true. We, we, that's, we're on the same page. Let's talk a little bit about your day. So if you were to sign up or reserve a spot, where's the pickup? Where do you go? Can you kind of walk us through yeah. what a discover to hatchery wine tour day would, would be like? So we have several pickup locations, all the local hotels, the downtown public lot. Uh, we will pick up at, um, the Glider Port as well at Skylark North. Okay, the a, RV park. The mm-hmm. RV park there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just recently um, got together with them to, to manage that. We also have pickup in Bear Valley Springs at the uh, Community Service District office there. And um, let's see. Oh, and at Heart Flat Hacienda mm-hmm. okay. down the road. Mm-hmm. So if you, you stay now, of course, most of these places you'd have to be a guest for yeah. us to pick you up there. Um, if you're in town, the public lot is kind of our pickup du jour. So that is where, depending on the reservations and where pickup points are, that's kind of our default. We leave from there at 1140. We do check in about 1120. We get everybody checked in, see if anybody needs any snacks and water. Uh, We kind of go over all the good safety stuff that we have to do. And then we head out to our first winery. We get there at noon. And that would be one of three of the four. So again, Dorner Family Vineyard, Tehachapi Wine and Cattle Company, Tehachapi Winery, and Triassic Vineyards. And we have about an hour and 15 minutes at each winery. As you get off the bus, I hand you a little poker chip with our logo on it, and that's how you get your wine tasting. You turn that into the staff there. Okay. And then we, I, right now, generally come around (laughs) a few times. I know I say we, we're working on and hiring other guides. Um, I come around a few times. We check in on everyone, make sure that, you know, if you are kind of leaning towards a sweet wine or red wine, a lot of the wineries will kind of make adjustments to your tasting, Mm -hmm. and we can help recommend what to look for there. And we'll go through three wineries. Oh, I almost forgot lunch. So we have lunch at the first first winery. Mm -hmm. It's a a lovely box lunch from Small Town Girl Charcuterie. And it's either a charcuterie board or sandwich, chips, and fruit. 
It's fairly light, but most people say it's plenty filling. And it's just a kind of a good way to start your tour because mm -hmm. it, it can be a lot of wine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you want to <laughs> eat before you drink, right? Yeah. I mean, right. honestly, it's a tasting, yeah. but let's be safe about everything. Right, right yeah. exactly. I mean, even though we're driving for you, yeah. you know, you want to have a good time. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. want to end up being sick or not feeling well because you've had a little too much. Mm -hmm. um, and the lunch definitely helps with that, as do all the snacks and water we liberally give out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll go to the three wineries. In between each stop, we like to give a little bit about either the history of the town, the history of the AVA, or oftentimes the history of the winery itself, how the owners got into the wine business, kind of what their story and background is. Or say, for example, um, the story of the very first grapes, commercial grapes, right. planted there at uh, what's now Tapestry Wine and Cattle Company, but what mm -hmm. was Sousa Family Vineyards. And that original three acres has got such an interesting story, that Primitivo. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, of course, still being made into wine now. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of great stories and a lot of great personalities in the industries out here. And, in fact, that's one of the, the best things about Tehachapi is it's a mom and pop shop. So we like to tell their story as we go through the, the tour. Um, once we've had our, our three stops, we basically drop off in reverse order of what we picked up. So everybody has about the same amount of time on the bus. And again, that just depends on whether we have, you know, one group of four or three groups of, you know, five, six, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, however many people we have on the yeah, bus. Every tour time. is going to be different, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little different each time mm -hmm. because it's a group tour. Right. So it's not private. The cool thing that I, that you pointed out to us when we were taking a look at the bus and this, obviously if you're out on a tour and you have a bottle you like, and you purchase said bottle, you have temperature controlled storage for bottle purpose that is basically guaranteed not only keeping temperature appropriate, but but safe in transit. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so this goes back to a bad experience in my history, right? <laughs> I went on a wine tour. I had a very expensive bottle of Old Vine Zin that was thrown into a trunk. And uh, at the time, I that was a special thing for me to buy. <laughs> and it just got roasted in the heat. This was, this was down in Temecula, which is lovely wine country as well. But it can be 110 down yeah. there during the summer and unfortunately that bottle um got so hot that the cork popped Ugh. and the wine was ruined and so that was one of the very first things uh, when my wife and i when claire my wife and i were talking about you know little details we need to make sure we have and i said we need to make sure we have either a wine fridge or something to stabilize that mm -hmm. and so we went out we purchased these livery i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that correctly uh, boxes and they hold six wine bottles in isolation they have a cooler kind of in the middle, like a cooling core. And they don't require any power from the bus itself, so we don't have to leave the bus running to keep your wine cool. And so as long as you're with us, I can't guarantee once your wine bottle's made into your car, <laughs> but as long as you're with us, your wine's in good hands. Yeah, it's awesome. And they're, they're stackable. They fit in the back of the, yeah. the bus so they don't shift around. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty awesome touch that, yeah, if you're investing in wine, you know, it's, you're going to want to make sure it, make, it makes it back to your car and then eventually your home. And the bus itself, 14 passenger, very easy to board, comfortable, lots of leg room. I was impressed with that nice, comfortable seating, mm. you know, so as you're uh, traveling and, and going between each of the destinations, you're going to do it in comfort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we invested in leather seats that were comfy. We wanted to make sure that everybody had um, plenty of room there and that, you know, you weren't cursing your back by the end of the trip. Um, we also invested in retractable seatbelts, which seems like a little detail, but the, the kind that are more like airlines, those can get in the aisles, uh, people can get, get hung up on their leg. It's not great. And the, the other really thing I like about that bus is the big windows, yeah. the almost floor to ceiling windows, uh, because again, to be such a beautiful place and you can really just sit there and soak it in as you drive by. And then you've got a little audio system. So as you're driving, you can actually talk about things as they're passing. Yeah. Yeah, then th that's kind of that when I was talking about when we talk about tell the story of the AV and the people. Um, we do that between stops, and so you're getting a little entertainment on the uh, sometimes long drives. Between do you places. tell jokes? I try. <laughs> 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 I do warn people that they can get corny. So yeah. <laughs> It's a cool setup, too, because as you're pointing out, I mean, just in terms of looking at this as far as benefiting the entire region. So as we mentioned, you know, the wineries, they're located, you know, outside of the city limits around Cummings Valley uh, for the most, you know, that's where they're at. But 
you pointed out, you have a lot of people coming to stay for the weekend. They're staying at hotels in the city. There's a benefit to city restaurants because after the wine tour is over, they want to go to dinner somewhere, you know, and you're dropping them off back at the public parking lot, which, you know, we built that park and ride as uh, in a partnership with uh, Kern Community or Kern Cog and also um, Kern Regional Transit. A bunch of other folks use it, but then to have it as a kickoff point for a tour of the area is awesome as well. So they're getting a lot of them getting dropped off downtown. So there's a there's a little bit of a benefit for everybody in this economically. Yeah, there's a saying we like to use when we talk about partnerships in the area, and that's when the tide rises, all the boats in the harbor rise mm -hmm. together. And so I firmly believe that if everyone involved in this industry in this area as a as a tourism region the more we work together, the more we try to promote each other, the better it's going to end up for everybody. Yeah. It's going to bring dollars into Tehachapi. It's going to bring visibility into the amazing things we have here. And it, it just helps build relationships. And that's a conversation well. it's hard to have sometimes with businesses like, like wineries. And I think our wineries have done a pretty good job realizing that. I know I think there's still a little bit of work to be done inside of our beer community because when a new brewery opens up, it's natural to think like, oh, well, they're competing with me. Well, not necessarily because the more of an attraction there is, and I think Bakersfield's a great example with their brewer's district that they've done where all these breweries sort of located in a similar area and they market together. And a lot of the, the wineries and ABAs will do that as well in certain areas throughout the country. So that really helps a little bit more business is not necessarily a bad thing because that that, uh, that ability to market yourselves together and give people a reason to come to Tatcha before three microbreweries as opposed to one or two or four wineries as opposed to one. That gives you more of a destination. There's an opportunity to work together. And compete. you can see this in other destinations as well. I mean, mm -hmm. Paso Robles has exploded. And you can tell because they have an excellent marketing program mm -hmm. and their wineries have worked together wonderfully. Actually, their entire tourism uh, community has yeah. worked together wonderfully and that's created a big boom for them business wise. Now that's been a huge boom there, but you can see it in other places as well. And up here, we're a smaller community. I don't know that we necessarily want to be inundated with all that traffic, <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's a nice balance to be sure. found and that, that can really help everyone up here, especially our, our small businesses. I mean, we have so many mom and pop shops up here and that's wonderful to see. It's a wonderful culture that I think we've, uh, you guys have helped keep over the years. And something like this, where we specifically can call out businesses that are locally owned and promote those. So like you said, when someone wants a dinner after a tour, I can point at places like Jake's and Petra's and Perfetto's mm -hmm. and Red House and many, many more and say, hey, these are great local places to go try. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And then your website is discoverattachby.com. Uh, folks can get pricing information, you know, book tours, all that stuff. Uh, so if they want to check that online, they can uh, find you guys there. And then I assume all the social media channels are out there too, correct? We are on Facebook and Twitter there right you now. And the handle is just Discover Tatchby. Cool. I tell you, when you, when you guys go onto Instagram, you're going to blow up. Because people are going to just eat, eat the photos, you know, <laughs> so, especially if you've got a photo, you know, a, a photo journalism background and that's going to transcribe and oh my God. Or funny dude. TikTok videos of people who had too much wine on the <laughs> wine tour would also be a smash hit. I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, we haven't breached TikTok yet, but Instagram has been <laughs> and Facebook have been successful for us. And uh, we also do a post every Thursday. In fact, it just came out a couple hours ago where we talk about what's going on mm -hmm. in wine country. Um, it's just called This Weekend Tashby Wine Country. Uh, Claire likes to call it The Weekend Wine Up. <laughs> no, she wants me to get that in there. So my <laughs> wife and I look at that every Thursday to try to figure out where to go. That's awesome. We, so we, every Thursday I look forward to that, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> Tashby Wine is doing this, and it's coming straight from you. It's this yeah. collection, so you don't have to go to the individual wineries, social media, or website. You can just... Thursday afternoon, yeah. look for your post. Well, and it's one of those things where, I mean, we, of course, would love it if you guys visit the winery websites and things, too. We try to pack as much as we can in that Of course, post. yeah. But sometimes if it's all in one place, people are more likely to go out and do something mm -hmm. because it's easier for them to find mm -hmm. what the options are. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can expand that. We're, we're planning on doing the weekend wind-up on Thursdays, 
but we're hoping to do um, something similar for in-town events mm -hmm. and then just general area events as well in the future. Um, we just have to find a little bandwidth for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have kicked things off here on a smart time of the year where it's, it's cool and you can kind of feel your way through and, it, you know, as allow people to, uh, you can feed off their experience and say, ah, oh, that works. And now as it's starting to warm up and we're going to start seeing more events, more people coming, you guys are going to be primed, ready to roll. This is like the spring training, if you will. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's working the out the kinks. <laughs> yeah, and then you guys are going to be fired up, and that bus is going to be loaded. You're going to end up with the the uh, the bridal, uh, you know, whatever what bachelorette, party? bachelorette party. Bachelorette <laughs> parties, and you know, gosh knows what else. But it's it's going to book fast with 14 seats that are available. That's that will book fast. Well, that is the dream key. Um, <laughs> we have been in the, and we did start now. For, for that exact reason, right? We want to be prepared for the busiest season for tourism. We actually had what we call review crew tours back in December and January where we, where we invited uh, um, certain folks that we knew up and basically they went on a tour, we took them to dinner, and they ripped the tour apart for us. So they... they wow. They, yeah. Very smart. Yeah. And that, that helped us work out a lot of kinks. Um, you know, we were joking about this a little earlier when we are talking in the bus, yeah. but one of the comments we've received on is that uh, the reviews are, or the, the tours are very detail oriented and that we think of a lot of little things. And I'd like to keep that going and make sure that we can be as top notch as possible so that when you do take a tour with us, uh, all those little things are taken care of. So you're fine. Been fine tuning it. That's really smart. Yeah, thank you. And it takes a lot too, though, to do, I mean, and, and obviously you'll have some experience in that being travel journalists, but to say, okay, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to do this tour and I want you to kill me at the end. So mm, tell me right. what I've done wrong. <laughs> Thank and, goodness they were your friends. Yeah. And yes. be able, but, and then to respect them enough to say, okay, like not to take it personal and just say, okay, I got to work on this. You're right. And then, so that's how really any business grows and gets better so we, by trying to correct those things. We have a joke about this. I actually have my bachelor's degrees in studio art, okay. which I say the only thing that degree was good for is that I went through a lot of critiques and just getting roasted on yeah. work and <laughs> getting used to that. So that, that's been what there that degree go. was good for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what makes you better, though. You know, oh, is, yeah. and I mean, for us, I mean, we listen to the critiques of people that have listened to the show, and our show has evolved now that we're in our third season, and it's just a little over two years of doing this. Critiques. Yeah, I know you don't. You know, I Key, don't. you and I have been, we, you and I, Key, have been spot on. This guy to my Never left. Never been critiqued. I just, we just pull him along. Yeah. We just pull yeah. him along. And knees hurt from carrying you around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but we do listen sure. to the feedback. And yeah. there's, you know, we make it a little self-adjustment. Not just this podcast, but everything we do at the right. city. And you're your own worst critic, too, on yeah. anything. And I'm sure you guys are the same way with the wine tour. It's like, yes. you, you and maybe folks don't notice it, but you notice it, right? Maybe the folks listening didn't notice, but in some of our older equipment, Key and I would notice something, yeah. a buzz or a hum, and we're like, it drives me nuts. Yeah, and so we we're go the, and fix we're it. The, right. We're in the customer service business. You have wine tours. Yeah. I'm public safety and clean water and treating wastewater. It's a customer service driven. Yeah. Everything that we do universally. Yeah, and, and for a business like yours to be successful, word of mouth is going to be the huge thing. So oh, their absolutely. personal experience that someone has that they can now tell their friend or the next time I have family that come in, mm -hmm. you know, and my family had a great experience on this tour experience, we're going to do it again. And it'll be something that gets repeated. So not having the tunnel vision and sitting on the round table and taking those critiques, making adjustments going, oh, okay, I yeah. didn't think about that. Those are the things that make you good. When we started restoring the depot key 15 years ago, that was my mandate. I didn't want somebody to come to the museum and feel like, don't come back, right? I wanted them, every one of them to repeat to their friends and family, you must go and have them come back. You have to return and return. And the word of mouth is the most important part. Yeah. And yeah. we achieved that goal with the depot. Yeah. And, and tours absolutely live and die by word of mouth and reviews. Yeah. And luckily, um, maybe not so much luck, but a, a lot of hard work, I'd like to think at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've had nothing but good reviews so far. It's awesome. And I'd like to keep striving to keep that way because you can't fall back on your laurels just because you've had a few good reviews. Mm -hmm. You have to keep working towards making it better and better and better mm -hmm. so that when people come and have an experience with us, whether it's the Signature Wine Tour or some other tour in the future, we can deliver a truly excellent experience for them 
that ex- that they want to recommend to friends and family. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's the goal for us is to make an experience that you you want to go home and just shout to the world, "Hey, you have to try this." Yeah. So I think we have another home run in touch me. Yes, we do. And more importantly, when folks like if you have visitors that come to town, like I, you know, having grown up in Tatchby, when this happens, people come to visit you. Like back then when there wasn't a lot going on, you had to entertain these folks all right. weekend long. Now you're able to say, you know what? You should go take this Discovery Wine Tour. <laughs> Get or, out of my hair for a while. Or you take it with them. <laughs> or you take it with them. And right. then you don't have to be, do the entertaining. It's all it's all covered. And, and you might learn something yourself. Yeah, you don't right? have to drive yeah. from winery to winery and yeah. you know and have a designated driver everybody can enjoy. And yeah. So, yeah. One of, one of the, my favorite reviews that we've received was someone who's lived in town for a good while, probably a decade or so. And they said, you know, I've lived here for a long time, and I learned more in one hour with Discover <laughs> Tehachapi in the beginning of the tour than I have here in 10 years. You should tell them to start listening to Tatchapon. I, I right. tell a lot that of people to start listening to Tatchapon. That should be part of your... <laughs> yeah. And I will tell you that Chris is one of our, our listeners as well. So, okay. you know, it's uh, when he uh, is out on the road, he's able to digest an episode when he's not... Uh, talking about right Tehachapi. now I, I don't do it on the tours but i i do drive a lot for other reasons and yeah. well if you end up it, keeps me if one day you're out there in your little horse you could just go ahead and play one of the podcasts out there <laughs> and you're touring around and we'll <laughs> we'll be your backup for oh you for that my day. goodness well uh, chris anything else that maybe we didn't touch on that you you think that would be important for people to to listen to take on this experience of discover to hatchby not in particular. I mean, again, discoverthp.com is the, the place to go. You can book there. You can also call us and at um, 661-235-5334 and book there as well. But the website's the easiest way to do it. And then on social media, what how do they find you on social media? What's Just Discover Tehachapi on both Facebook and Instagram. Excellent. Okay, good. Well, guys, anything else? No, I'm I'm excited for this this opportunity to see where it goes and and how it expands and adds to other events and things when you know the the season really picks up in the the warmer months. I'm I'm really encouraged by all this. So Agreed. thank you for the investment. I think that the key words are discover to hatch be great name. Yep. Oh, and then you. experience and I believe it but when you say it I believe that you feel the passion about it that people are going to come away with an experience. So um that's one of my takeaways just mm-hmm. from this conversation is that you and Claire have a passion for what you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, we could take you around and I could be just a bus driver, but we call ourselves tour guides for a reason. Yeah. And we want to guide you through the whole process and deliver, like you said, an experience so that at the end of the day, you feel like you've learned something, you've enjoyed yourself, and hopefully you've discovered a couple new wines you like. I love that. Awesome. I do too. All right. What's the go-to wine? What have you seen? For me? That, yeah, the, what? Okay, let me uh, one for you. Well, don't pick out a particular winery. No, no, just this, all just good. the type of wine. The type of wine. the type of wine. Okay, okay, that's a toughie. I'm a big Tempranillo fan, but I also like Primitivo a lot. Okay, mm. now have you seen as far as when people are buying a wine? Are they the whites or the reds? Are you seeing more of one or the other? No, or, actually, it depends on the group. So I, I feel like tours, individual tours end up doing that. We'll have a lot of white wines purchased or a lot of red wines or one of them, a lot of champagne, or not champagne. Some of the sparkling. Like sparkling yeah. wine, yeah, purchased. Um, but overall, it's pretty even. Yeah. I think everybody up here does a really good red blend, mm-hmm. which you take different types, and they're yeah. all really, they're the, each one I think has a very good red blend. Which so, is, I've been, yeah. so I've been branching out. I used oh, to be a red blend guy. Now yeah. I'm into the Syrahs and a couple others. I can't remember their names, yeah. but just really good, good wine. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very different. Every wine is so different. What's well, the now one we thing? Have two Syrahs up here as well. So. Right. Oh, then the, the one thing that, and just to mention specifically, I mean, you know, I, I think I found it last summer. I think I was with you, Greg. I don't know, <sighs> but. It Triassic mixing the red blend with their almond champagne. Oh, I yeah. forgot what they called that. It's like a great summer. Mm-hmm. It, there's a they have a name. Well, for it's it. like the anyway. In and Out secret menu. Yeah, right? when you go yeah. to Triassic, they call it Jim a Arnold has. A, I have to go look it up. Some He's kind, got well, a secret menu. Spritzer doesn't sound manly enough. Please don't use the word spritzer <laughs> yeah. on me. I won't no. drink them ever again. But <laughs> no, it it it, it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> and perfect for a warm. If as you get into the warmer months, it's a really and, and that was even suggested by Jim. He was like. Drink this; it'll be really good. We're so unsophisticated when it comes to wine. I'm like, oh, I like I like the Syrah, and you know some others. I don't even know, yeah. but they're really good. That's yeah. the great <laughs> thing about our wineries, though, is there's such a selection yes. that there, there really is something for everyone, from mm-hmm. uh, uh, German style sweets to really deep. I mean, the Syrahs, like the deep, deep 
single variety reds. Yeah. The blends have been stellar. The Malbecs for some Malbecs. folks that make those. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. those are yeah. really specific. Those yeah, grapes. Yeah, House, which I didn't mention because they're not on our signature wine tour, but we are working with them on a, a kind of Friday night wine and dine. Awesome. So they are somebody we are working with. Yeah, they're Malbecs, incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which one? Uh, Lo, Los Viejeros, Rancho okay. Los Viejeros. I, I have not tried that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, uh, very um, good. A I'll little to... greenhouse off the uh, 202. side on 202. 202. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and each of the wineries has its own character. Absolutely know, and, does. And, and personality. Don't they, they do. Yeah. They really do. And uh, I always want to call them Texas Wine and Cattle, but Tehachapi <laughs> Wine and Cattle. <laughs> yeah, that's from Wine and Cattle mean, Company. It, it, that's, to me, I, I love that that name, you know, and then you've got the family names that with the Dorner family and the Triassic going with the... Based on the dirt, the and soil. Then just yeah. the and then the And then the Tehachapi one. <laughs> I mean, you talk about just really getting to the foundations of things. We've got it right here, mm-hmm. and it's a part of your experience at Discover Tehachapi. And there are others that have purchased ground and are planting vineyards as we speak. Yep. Doesn't so surprise more me. More to come. Yeah. yeah. And then just so you guys, you guys may not know this, but coming up on one of our future episodes, Bob Souza. Mr. Wine. The godfather of Tehachapi Wine. The godfather of Tehachapi <laughs> Wines is I coming wait. in. I can't wait. And yeah. we're going to talk about Tehachapi Wines, where it all came from, you, what it was for him and Patty. Yeah, you hear the names Bob and Patty Sousa a lot yeah. on the tour. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I like to point this out because uh, our friend who works with us, Jay, went to UC Davis, but it was UC Davis who said, that'll never work in those soils. And Bob was like, okay, watch. Mm-hmm. You know, so a bunch of real smart people from UC Davis. Isn't said, that UC never Davis work. an ag school? Exactly. Oh, my goodness. And they right. said, that won't work. Well, and they were worried about our frost specifically. Right. But right. We're, we're timed kind of just so yep. <laughs> that it yep. works out still. Yeah. Awesome. So, anyway, I was I really, that always, it's my favorite part. Of I the can't story. wait to talk to Bob. <laughs> yes. Bob Sousa is going to be a great interview. Yeah. It, Not that this wasn't. But Bob <laughs> is well, legendary. I agree, though. I'd love to be a fly on the wall right. for that. <laughs> well, the nice thing is it, it expands this conversation. Sure does. And, right. and he's already in the book, so he's going to be one of the next uh, couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. So, that's something to look forward to. So, we're going to take and, and, and talk to, we'll even talk to him about the Tehachapi experience through Discover Tehachapi and and what that meant and where he's at now, you know, when he started the yeah. the business many, all many moons other, ago and how other, it's evolved. All these other wineries and the, the people should be sending Bob and Patty Sousa gift cards in the mail. Like, thank you. Yeah. You know, they started it all. Yeah. For well, sure. you never know. I'm sure that they are welcome anytime they walk into one of the, the local wineries. They probably don't they, pay for their wine. Yeah, they <laughs> I'm going to start hanging with Bob. Yeah. They are, they I, always, are, I always pay double somehow. I don't know how that works. <laughs> well, uh, Chris, just thank you so much for taking the time to come in. I know we juggled schedules a couple times and you were just really accommodating to get you in here because this is something that we wanted to talk about and we wish you much success. Mm-hmm. And like you said, as the as the tide rises, everyone rises with it, something to that effect. And and that's what we want to wish you is high tides and, and much success as, as you and Claire in this business you know, rise with the success of our wineries. Well, thank you so much, guys. It's been a real pleasure coming out and, and talking to y'all. Yeah, thank you for your investment. Again, discover com or discover Tehachapi on Instagram and Facebook. And you can get the, what was the Thursday, the name of the Thursday uh, uh, posting for the weekends? What's com- The weekend wine up. The weekend wine up is yeah. out. Check it on Thursday afternoons. And uh, guys, anything in closing? I think this has been a think great we did interview. It. Thank yeah. you. Great show. Thank you. Yeah. We, we remind you that if you've got a, a show idea, a show topic that you'd like us to uh, talk about, send it to media at Tehachapi City Hall. We're happy to explore it, see if we can find an expert, someone like Chris to come in and talk about it so you're not hearing it third party through us. You get to hear it directly from the person that's involved in it. So again, media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We appreciate your time, and we'll catch you again on a future episode of Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.